Father, we love you. You're so good. Jesus, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise tonight. We open our hearts to you.
Thank you for worshiping with us tonight. Why don't you take a few moments and say hi to some of the people around you, and then we'll get ready for a great message. Thank you, Dwayne. How is everybody tonight? Good. Are y'all ready? Seems like it's been forever since I've been up here. I don't know. I think it's been, I think it's been December since I've been up here. That's too long. Anyway, that's good. So I'm ready, and I hope you are ready, because I'm excited about tonight. We've been talking about the armor, and uh, how many of you have been coming to all of these, and you've, been, and you've heard all of them? Come on, anybody heard all of them? You know that too? There's some, good, good. Didn't you love last week, Taylor? I like that boy. He's a good kid. Yeah, the fact that he's my son-in-law makes it even better. So he did a great job yesterday, yesterday. Last week, this, the shoes of peace. And so Pastor Paul started it out with, uh, what is it? What did he start out with? The belt of truth. And then Pastor Eric on the breastplate of righteousness. But uh, uh, today I'm going to get to talk to you about faith, the shield of faith. Come on. Somebody get excited about that. <laughs> yeah, a few of you there, huh? Uh, as I was studying this, I had, I had put a bunch of notes together. But this past, I think it was Monday night that I was just kind of sitting back in my, in my room where I study. And uh, the Lord starts speaking to me about some things that I think I'm going to bring out from this passage even before I talk about the shield of faith. So if you've got your Bibles with you, uh, we're going to go right there to Ephesians chapter 6 and beginning in verse 10. This is the chapter, this is the, 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 the passage where it talks about the armor of God in Ephesians 6 beginning at verse 10. I want to pull out and show you some things here that I saw Monday night as I'm studying this. It says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I want you, if you've got your Bibles with you, anybody still keep the Bibles that have got actually pages and so forth? Okay, underline stand there or highlight it or something. If you got it on your phone, you can highlight it too because it says here that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to, what's it say? Withstand, okay, highlight that once or underline that in your Bible, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to What? Stand. Then what does it say after that? Stand. stand, therefore. Okay. Now, how many times did it say stand? Come on, you all can count, right? It said stand three times, and it said withstand one time. Okay. You know, when the Bible says something that many times, you know what it's trying to tell you? You better start learning to stand. Okay. Anytime the Bible repeats something over and over and over again, it's, it's putting emphasis on that one word. And here, it was interesting because as I'm studying Monday night, it's jumping out at me saying, stand, stand, stand. The whole purpose of the arm is so we can do what? So we can stand. Okay. 
And when I looked that up, I thought, okay, what's that word stand mean? Uh, and so this is just some stuff I learned just the other day. The Greek word for stand, I'm going to say it because it's going to make sense in a minute. It was histomi. Histomi, okay, was the Greek word, okay? But that was, what it means is this. It means to make a stand and maintain it, okay? To make a stand and maintain it, to stay in your position or to stay in your place. Okay, so basically, when you take up a stand or when you take a position on anything, it says to take up a position, stand there, and maintain that position. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, all right. So if I'm going to take a stand on anything in the Bible, uh, okay, for instance, what stand do we take here? What stand have you taken in the area of finances? Okay, somebody, somebody throw a scripture out at me. What, when the, what does the Bible say about finances? Okay, what does the Bible say about, boy, that was, that was the, that, that was silence that was so deafening right then. <laughs> Nobody in this church has anything to say about finance. Okay, let me ask you this question a different way. What does the Bible say about providing for all your needs as far as finances go? Come on, somebody. What is that? Amen. Okay, amen. Somebody's taking a stand, right? Proverbs. Right, Proverbs. What's it say? Yeah. No, I think that's, it's not in Proverbs. It's, just, it's in the Bible. Come on. <laughs> Pastor Paul, help me. He's not even here. All right. Okay, does it say, my God shall supply all your needs? According to his glorious riches. Okay, is that, a, is, that a, is that a scripture about finances? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Is that the word of God? Yeah, can you take a stand on that scripture? Okay, you can if you don't know it. Come on. I just proved something here. What I'm, I mean, really, if you don't know it, how can you take a stand? I guess I'm going to have to back up a little bit here, not even get into the shield of faith. You can't take a stand if you don't know a scripture. So when it comes to your finances and it says, can my God supply all your needs or any other scripture about finances, you can take a stand and you can maintain that stand but the reason why Paul is saying you need to take up the armor so that you can stand, because when you take a stand, it's real easy to take a stand on God shall supply all my needs when your bank account is full and you're paying all your bills and everything's looking good, right? Isn't that easy to take a stand? Okay, but what happens when something starts coming against you, the enemy, and he starts buffeting you and starts making it sound like, okay, I'm taking a stand, but things aren't looking good. Are you going to maintain your position or are you going to back off? Or are you going to get pushed around? That's what this means here, okay? How about in the area of healing? I'm going to ask some questions here. How about in the area of healing? What kind of a stand are you going to take? Come, somebody give me a scripture, please. Worship the Lord your God. Okay. Any other scripture on healing? Psalm 103. Okay. Bless the Lord all my soul and all is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord all my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who does what? Forgives all your iniquities. Who? Heals all your diseases. Is that a scripture? I love that one. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. Can you take a stand on that scripture? Can you? Okay. Lord. Lord. Help us here. You can take a stand. But the Bible says you need to put on the full armor of God, okay? Because taking that stand is going to, uh, the enemy is going to put up a fight and resist that stand. Does that make sense? On anything that you're believing for in the word of God, you can take a stand, but the enemy is going to come against that stand. And that's why it says here, you must put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. Wiles just means schemes, deceit, because he doesn't have any power over you, but he can deceive you, and that's how he gets you to take get off your stand by deceiving you. Because the word of God says you're healed. The word of God says he'll provide for you. But the, but the enemy is throwing stuff at you that's just contrary to what the word is. And what are you going to do? Are you going to stand on the word or are you going to back off and believe what the enemy says? Okay, so he comes against you. So in order to come against the enemy, you need to put on the armor. Is this making some sense? Because this is really something that you need to know because that's the whole purpose for the armor. Okay. <sighs> Good. Okay, I'm not done, though, because I just talked about stand. There's three of them in there, but 
there's a word called withstand, okay? I had you underline that. That is very similar to the Greek word for stand. Histomi being stand, but withstand is ant histomi, okay? And this is what that word means. To be hostile towards, to resist, oppose, rebel, okay? Let me say it again. To be hostile towards, to resist, oppose, rebel. In other words, you need to be hostile towards the enemy and the lies that he comes against you when you are taking a stand for what you know is true. You cannot fight the devil by being passive. You must be hostile. You must be rebellious. Christians should be the, great, the biggest rebels around. You should. Okay. Somebody can get excited. Be a rebel against the enemy and his lies, which... He has quite a few people that are preaching those all the time. You hear them on the news. You hear them everywhere. The lies of the enemy, okay? Just watch TV and find out about all the drugs that are out there for all the sicknesses that are going to come upon you, that kind of stuff. You can withstand, withstand meaning I'm, being, I'm rebelling against that, okay? When the enemy brings a lie, you just rebel against the lie, and you stand firm in what you know to be true, Okay? Wow, that was good. Okay, that was good. And we haven't gotten into the shield of faith yet, but I want you to understand the shield of faith, everything that you've learned so far about the belt of truth and about the breastplate of righteousness and about the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, those are all pieces of the army, of the army, of the armor that help you to stand firm on what you believe and not get pushed around by the enemy, okay? And today we're going to learn about the shield of faith. Okay, very cool. God, you're so good. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about the shield of faith. Now, this is what I'm going to say about the shield of faith. Um, the shield of faith, and I don't know how, who has said all of this, okay? Did, did, was there ever a picture of the armor? I don't know. If, oh, it's right there. Look at that. Okay, that's the breastplate right there, okay? So that's not the whole piece, the whole armor. But Paul, when he talked about the armor, he started out with the belt of truth, okay? And if you were here listening, the belt of truth is the word of God, okay? You all know that, right? Okay, it is the logos word of God. Do you know what that means? Logos is just the written word. It's the, it's the Bible. It's, it's, uh, it's, the God, it's the word that God uh, wrote, okay? It's inspired. The, the belt of truth is the word of God, but the shield of faith in the Roman soldier, the shield of faith would, when he wasn't using it, he would hang it on that belt, okay? Because the shield of faith and the belt of truth are so inseparable, uh, you can't really have one without the other because faith comes from Hearing what? The word. So you have to know the word in order to have faith. That was interesting today when, we're asking, when I'm asking for some scriptures and you couldn't tell me some. Maybe I made it confusing. But if you don't know a scripture on any particular area, you can't have faith in that area. Okay? I know God gives you a measure of faith, but how does he give you a measure of faith? He gives it through his word, okay? When you all got born again, just remember the time you got born again. You know how you got born again? You heard a word about the Jesus Christ coming and dying for your sins or whatever the word you heard, you heard something and it produced faith in you because that's how faith comes. So the belt of truth and the shield of faith are really inseparably linked together, okay? And uh, let me see this. The belt of truth was writ was a uh, it was the first piece mentioned okay uh, in this passage because it mentions the belt of truth first and I believe there was there is a purpose in in that one being mentioned first because everything in your life actually comes from having a knowledge of the word of God the logos okay in a couple of weeks uh, Lauren's going to be teaching on the sword of the spirit which is the Word of God also. That's a little different because what she's going to be teaching on, there's the Logos word and there's the Rhema word. 
The sword of the Spirit is the rhema word. The belt of truth is the logos word. And faith comes from you knowing uh, the logos. And faith comes from hearing the logos. And then God takes that word and he, how's, what's the word? Quickens. That's the word I was looking for. He quickens that word to you, okay? It's kind of like this. Have you ever had it where you're just muttering the word over and over? Okay, let's just say, for instance, you're not feeling good, and you're saying, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed, okay? He forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my disease. And you're just saying it over and over again. And then all of a sudden, God just quickens that word to you. And it's like, wait, by his stripes, I'm healed. Rather than just, does that make sense? At one time, it's just the word. It's anointed. But then it's quickened to you, and all of a sudden, you receive it. At that moment, what happened? Faith came in. And that shield of faith came there, and you can stand right against that and stand firm in that place, okay? So the two of them are linked together, the belt of truth and the shield of faith. Because, again, Romans 10, 17 uh, and you mentioned that when faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let me just read you the statement I wrote here. If you fail to put the word of God as a priority in your life, your faith will begin to dwindle because the presence or absence of faith in your life is determined by the presence or absence of the word of God in your life. Yep. The presence or absence of faith in your life is determined by the presence or absence of the word of God in your life. And why is that true? Because faith comes from hearing. And so as much as you hear, your faith increases. Okay? If you want to increase your faith in the area of your finances, and we mentioned before, you should be reading scriptures that have to do with your finances and about God supplying all your needs and uh, everything else, all the other scriptures about that, because that is going to produce faith in you, because that's what the Word of God does. That's why it's so important that we have a time in the Word of God every day, okay? If you're coming to church to get your weekly dose of the Word, that's not enough. Wouldn't you agree? Okay? You all feed your flesh, Three times a day. Right? And if you don't feed your flesh three times a day, what's your flesh start doing? It starts screaming at you. Right? Okay, when you're fasting, does your flesh scream at you? Yes. Okay? Does your soul and your spirit scream at you when you don't get, when it doesn't get the word? Yeah. You need to feed it. You need to make it a priority. Because as you make the word of God a priority in your life, Faith comes in all different areas of your life. You know something? You can get faith from reading the genealogies. Some of you said, no, I never got faith reading the genealogies. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Okay? Never happened. Okay, when you read the genealogies, you find out that David and Bathsheba gave birth to Solomon, who was in the lineage of Jesus, right? So that means that God can use... Uh, bad relationship of David and Bathsheba to produce something good. That means that God can take what is bad and turn, there's a song like that that you sing. I can't remember what it is. There you go. And he turns it. There you go. I love that song because when I hear that song, that's what I think about. God can take anything and turn it for good. Okay? But so doesn't that produce faith in you? It produced faith in me. I'm thinking, wow, God can take that mess that David did, and produced something good out of it, okay? That doesn't mean you're just messing things up on purpose so God can do it, okay? That's dumb to think that way. But the good thing is we do make messes, and God can turn that around. So does that produce faith in you? Yes, it does. There's a scripture. There is a healing scripture that I love because it talks about I can't, can't think of it. I can't say it word for word, but it says this. Fools, because of their iniquity, they became very sick to the point of death. Fools, because of their iniquity, became sick to the point of death, but then they cried out to God, and God heard them. He sent his word, and he healed them. Do you know how much faith that produces in me? Because the enemy can't ever say to me, well, you're sick because of your stupidity. Anybody ever have that, that the enemy tries to bring that at you while you're standing firm on your position? Yet he said, but 
That only holds true when you're good, but when you're bad, those scriptures aren't true. Okay, that's a lie. Because, and now I know a scripture that's going to say to the enemy, that's a lie because look at the word of God says. And that produces faith in that situation. Come on, people. If you, if you really believe this, you'd be in the word as much as you can because it'll change your life. Okay, so the, the presence or absence of faith, I'm going to say it one more time, the presence or absence of faith in your life is determined by the presence or absence of the word of God in your life. Faith and the word of God are inseparable. Okay, now let me go on. All right, uh, let me see here. I got here. How do I get more faith? Okay. I just put that in. Well, how do I get more faith? Somebody says, I mean, the disciples said this too before. God increased their faith. And what did he say? Well, hey, if you had faith as a mustard seed, you could move mountains. Okay. Because seeds grow. Seeds grow. And they produce more and more and more. And that's what you just need a seed of faith growing in good soil. And it'll produce what it's supposed to do. But this is what I wrote this down again. Romans 12, 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. I know Pastor Paul has used the scriptures. Most of you probably know that God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith, okay? Now, that's a good scripture to know because you know that faith comes from God, but you can also use that scripture, and the enemy can use that scripture to say to this, well, my problem is God just hasn't given me enough faith, Come on. I've had it many times before where I thought, do I have the faith to do this? God, can you give me enough faith? But you know something? The Word of God says he's dealt us a measure of faith. In any situation, this is true, any situation that you face, God is able to give you the faith to get through that. Do you believe that? Because he's given you the measure of faith that you need for any situation, okay? There's a scripture that has really helped me recently. And let me see if I can find it because I know I have it somewhere. All right, here. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I, I um, got this one down here in the Passion Translation. I don't read that one all the time. I like that one. I just don't have it in the Bible. But this is in the Passion Translation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this. We all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But... God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more. Trust and faith go hand in hand, okay? Each test is an opportunity to trust him more. And each, or I could say each test is an opportunity to have faith in him. For along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that you that, that will bring you out of it victoriously. I love how it says it there. Every trial God has provided, oh, along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. That is a, that is a, a scripture that can produce faith in you saying this. It doesn't matter what trial I'm facing. God has given me the faith that I need to be victorious over that. And it doesn't matter some trials may need a whole lot more faith than others, but he's always going to give you the measure that you need. So there's never a time where God isn't enough. God is always enough. Always enough. Faith is always enough, okay? When God talked about, let me just mention this. When God, or when Paul wrote about the shield of faith, let me just say this. The word he used for shield there, there's, let me say, there's, there's a couple of words uh, in the Greek for shield, and one of, the, one of the Greek words talks about a smaller shield that they used kind of in like, um, like in parades or just for public things, okay? They had a smaller shield. But there's a bigger shield that the Roman shoulders would use. That's, they called it a shield, but the Greek word there was almost as a Greek word like for a door. It was like as big of a door. Can you imagine having like a door in front of you? that you're holding this thing up, because it is tall and it is wide and it covers you, okay? And that thing hangs here. But even the Romans, I had read this, that when the Roman soldiers, when they would line up, their shields were so big they could lock them together and have like a wall pushing, okay? So they're that big. And that, that is the Greek word that 
Paul uses here when he talks about the shield of faith. He's not talking about a little teeny tiny one that's, you know, that's not covering. It's talking about a, a shield that's covering you from head to toe. And why? So it's saying this. The faith that you have is enough to protect every area of your life. And that is good news. It is not something wimpy. It is something big. Uh, and so it is all that you need. And, uh, boy, there's something else I wanted to say here, but I can't think. I can't find it in my notes. It is enough. I'm just saying this. It is enough to cover any need that you have, okay? And so Ephesians 6, 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Above all, saying this, and above all doesn't necessarily mean, um, in fact, I look this up, it doesn't mean that the shield of faith is better than all the other pieces. It just meant it's the one that's out front, okay? Because the shield, that's where you put it. It was out front. I mean, you got the breastplate. You've got all these other things. you got the shoot. But when that shield is out front, it protects every area, okay? So above all, Paul says, you need to get that shield out there. You need to keep it, and you need to use it. And in order to use it, you need to know the word because that is where you're going to get the faith. And when you put that shield out there, can you imagine standing firm on what you believe? But when the enemy's coming at you, and I talked about the fiery darts there, and really they were talking about arrows there. The enemy had arrows, but they were arrows that had, I mean, flame arrows, okay? Kind of like our modern-day bombs, you know? That's what they had there. They were shooting these things over. And so, but those are things that the enemy does. He shoots those fiery darts to try to get you off your position that shield of faith is what stops those things. And so you need that faith, okay? When, when you're coming against, when, when the enemy is coming against you, that is what's going to do it. It is that shield of faith that's going to do it. Is there anything else I need to really say? So when the enemy is saying to you, okay, let me just say this. First Peter 1, 5. Boy, I, I feel like I ran through my notes so fast. 1 Peter 1, 5, and through your faith, this is the New Living Translation, and through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive the salvation, which is ready to be revealed in the last day. The salvation, everything God has given you, through your faith, God is protecting you. It is that thing that is out there in front of you. Pastor Paul, you're back there. Do you got anything you want to share? Sure. Come on up here. Because I feel like I ran through this thing so fast. Did you hear anything I said? Yep. Or did you just come in? I just noticed you back there. I don't know how long you were back there. Well, I heard things you said. Okay. But I wasn't back there the whole time. Okay. Good deal. I, I, so, let me ask you this. What did you learn about the armor today from Pastor Mark? What was the first thing you talked about? Standing, staying, right? How important is that? Yes, faith is based upon what? The Word of God. Yeah, what did you always say? Based on what? Based, based on upon what? what? You have to ask that. Faith what? is not based on nothing. Faith is based upon something. It is a substance. It's evidence. And so if you're saying I'm standing in faith, I'm going to ask you based upon what? What scripture? What promise from God? What revelation from God are you standing upon? That's when the shield is out there. Yes. Amen. You know, and it's so effective, and it just works that way. This is not a magic thing. This is not like, hey, God loves Pastor Mark more than me, so he gets victory, or, you know, or so-and-so knows the word so well. You know, you can know what the word says and not be in faith. Pharisees and Sadducees, man, they knew it like crazy, and they killed Jesus. They didn't have faith. There's all kinds of people that can quote the Bible, but they don't have the armor on. But they can't stand yep. because they don't get everything working together. Amen. And so you just got to get it working together. I think Pastor Mark did a great job. And guess what, Pastor Mark? You don't need to go any longer. If you don't have that shield of faith, can you imagine having nothing in front of you and the enemy coming stuff at you? Come on. Guess who's going to run? You, you. you are. Because when you see that, then things coming, oh, I'm in trouble. Can I crinkle this up? You can crinkle that up. Okay, so like Pastor Mark doesn't have his shield of faith, but he knows the word, right? And I'm the devil? Oh, yeah. I go, you're no good. 
Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he, but I don't get it. I'm going to run. You're going to run. Yeah. You're going to go, I am too. No, I don't. You know, you're going to start questioning whether you're any, you know, you're not. Well, yep. Nobody loves you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't have a seal versus no face. I don't have the seal, yeah. <laughs> so I just got hit twice. So how many things in life are you going to accept? It depends on if you have your shield of faith up or not. Right. It really does. Because you don't receive anything from the devil if you don't have the faith. Why? Because you have nothing to stand up. Yep. Right. Ooh. <laughs> Take that. I got my shield. Great job. Pray for everybody. Pray for everybody. You guys are good. And get some scripture in you. Okay. <laughs> Father, you're so good. We love you. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the armor. Lord, you gave us your word, told us how to stand. Lord, we have to stand. Yeah. And Father, we can stand because we have your word and we have faith because you give us a measure of faith for every situation. There is never any situation that you haven't given us enough. So we thank you for that. Lord, I pray that people, we would leave this place, Father, and we would dig into your word for anything that we need from you. And we receive now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are so good. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>